Recipe for Pakora Curry You will need 4 tablespoons of gram flour or besan 2 cups of yogurt a glass of water half a teaspoon of red chilli powder half a teaspoon of turmeric powder or haldi a little bit of coriander leaves a twig of curry leaves two pieces of ginger two slices two cloves of garlic and half an onion we will blend all of these ingredients together to make the curry for the pakora you will need four tablespoons of besan or gram flour half an onion about medium pieces coarsely chopped half a teaspoon of coarsely grounded coriander seeds a quarter teaspoon of red chilli powder quarter teaspoon of zira and a quarter teaspoon of salt you will also need some oil to fry the pakoras approximately four to five glasses of water for the final balar you will need a quarter of an onion finely sliced some curry leaves a few dried red chilies a quarter of a teaspoon of zira and some lemon juice Kora curry is meant to be a sour dish and sometimes if the yogurt's not sour enough we will need to add a teaspoon of lemon juice at the end of the dish to make it more sour. First, chop the onion. You don't need small pieces, just fairly large ones will good. Put them in the grinder. Now add the yogurt. The ginger, garlic, and the curry leaves, the red chilli powder, the healthy coriander, and the four tablespoons of besan. Also add the water and blend it all together. Once it's blended, it should look like this. Put the mixture through a sieve. Just sieve all the mixture through. Add one more glass of water just to the sieve. We will save the remainder of this onion mixture that hasn't gone through the sieve and use it for the pakora mix. Heat the pan up and just constantly stir it to avoid any lumps we will keep stirring it until it boils as you can see the curry is starting to get thicker now and it's just right about ready to boil at this point just take care it doesn't boil over onto your stove If you start to think that the curry might be too thick for your liking, you can add some boiled water as we will cook this curry for half an hour at least, so it will evap evaporate. Now lower the flame of your cooker so the curry subsides. Let the curry cook on a low flame and in the meanwhile we'll cook the batter for the pakoras. Add 4 tablespoons of besan or gram flour to the remainder of the mixture that we got when we sieved the curry out. Now add all the onion, the spices and also add some coriander to that. Add the water as well and mix it all together. The pakora batter is done and now we'll just keep it aside for 30 minutes. After 45 minutes to an hour on a low flame, you can see that the curry has thickened up now. And we'll switch it off and let it cool down for a bit and make the pakoras now. Once the oil is hot enough, just slip some pakoras in. We'll fry the pakoras until they're brown.
Sometimes the pakoras in the curry get hard from the middle and they ruin the whole curry. So today we're going to put the pakoras into warm water as soon as it's done just to play safe. Now that they're evenly brown we'll take them out. Now we'll soak them in the water for around two minutes. After two minutes, take the pakoras out of the water and place them in the bowl. And now we'll put them in the cool down curry and mix it in. Now for the bagar, we'll add some oil, some ghee to the pan. And we'll also add half oil as well. Once the ghee has melted, add the onions, the curry leaves, the zira, and the tzuzuka. And mix it around. Once the onion is brown, add it to the pakora. Heat the curry up, cover it up for 5 to 10 minutes just to keep the aroma and let it settle in. Your pakora curry is ready. You can serve this with white basmati rice or roti.